Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Mobile Application Tester. We are done with all the tutorials of the chapter two where we were talking about mobile application test types. Now it's time we should look into the sample questions of this chapter and get some insights that what exactly could be the possibilities of the questions being asked to you when it comes to the examination. The very first thing we are talking about here is the sample question patterns and getting a count of number of questions which we can actually expect in terms of interacting with the examination and setting up our mind in order to prepare the chapter accordingly. That's the good news for you. You got a lot of questions from this particular chapter as we have got 13 questions which will be asked to you from chapter 2 including the K1, K2 and K3 where K3 questions are just... Uh, you know, kind of, you know, one where you have, oh, sorry, three questions, K1 will be four and K2 will be six. And that's how it sums up to the 30 number of questions. And of course, uh, different topics have different uh, distribution there. As you see, there are a lot of questions coming out from K1. So you can just define that, again, how much effort you need to actually put on each of the topic. So putting it all together, you will have 13 questions from this particular chapter, which is a great contribution out of 40. So almost like one fourth of your in examination will lie from here. So getting started with our very first question of this particular chapter, we are talking about which of the following statement is not a valid scenario for testing a mobile device regarding input sensors. Number one thing to remember from here that as it is just like foundation level certification, they will have a lot of tricks utilizing most, best, least, not, and all these kind of terms. You just want to make sure that when you read a question, you're not skipping those terms which are critically important to tell you the exact meaning of the question that what they really want to know from you. And at this point of time, we are being asked with not a valid scenario to test the input sensors, then you have to recall what are the different types of input sensors, how they can be tested. So we got four options here. Number one, A, verifying the quality of received GPS. Uh, you know, uh, GPS signals belongs to input sensors, though of course that will be a scenario to be tested because that's an input sensor for us to tell us the directions for several other apps. So that cannot be excluded. B, testing for correct functionality of gyroscope. Again, gyroscope is also an input sensor and again, not a good option to be selected for this question. C, validating data provided by the motion sensor. I think the name itself tells you that I'm a sensor, so don't select me, so don't go for such options, which gives you a clear hint that I'm an input sensor and you don't have to select that as a not option. Then I think we're just left with one option. The option is D, correct screen size in landscape and portrait modes. I think that relates to the orientation testing, not with the sensor. So, you know, that could be confusing sometimes. People think that, okay, of course, there's a sensor behind the screen, which just tilts, then you realize that, okay, it's uh, landscape. When you tilt again, it goes to portrait. No, it's just a liquid, which basically decides which orientation you're using when you tilt your phone. So. It's not a sensor, it's just a small <clears throat> test tube what has a liquid which decides what kind of orientation you are currently having and it just does that. So putting it all together, the right answer is D, correct screen size in landscape and portrait modes are not a valid scenario to be tested for input sensors. Moving to the next one, <clears throat> uh, scenario based question, let's understand this. A health insurance, <coughs> uh, sorry about that. A health insurance company released an update version, updated version of its customer app. The update includes a feature which scans the pharmacy bill and sends it to directly uh, the health insurance company for the payment. However, when the customer installed the update, they found that the camera could not be invoked to scan the bills. This bug was reported and fixed. Now the new test needs to be prepared and executed and retesting needs to be performed for the defect which you reported. Now which of the following tests will you exactly execute as most important test in the given scenario? So we got four options here. Test for performance, test for accessibility, test for access permission, test for installation. I think uh, that's a very really straightforward question based on the scenario that you had an issue or probably you want to test something new. So 
it's it's just that we want to make sure uh, what we are trying to test so in this case it's again very 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 straightforward and uh, that the issue which was reported was to access the camera which could not happen once the update was installed so access to the camera was not provided so we can definitely go with the access permission but looking forward to the other option test for the performance i don't think there are any hint which talks about any number of users working simultaneously so performance could not be a right answer and again, when it comes to the accessibility, we are not talking about any sort of uh, differently able users working on such things. So that could not be again in our scope. And D, when it comes to installation, the users are able to install the updates, but they got the defect in a different manner. So all they will need to do is the most important test to be performed is uh, because the missing or incorrect access permission was there. So maybe a possible root cause for the fixed problem should be tested so the right answer here is c test for access permissions for of course making sure the camera is now accessible after the issue has been resolved and create additional test cases to test other accesses if the app really requires one of them coming to the question number three which of the following is a primary test goal when performing test for coexistence of an system and the test with the other apps on the devices. Now, that's another thing to worry about when you read the last topic, which we just covered, and we wanted to make sure that when app is existing with competitive apps, it should not have any further problem, or interaction with existing apps like contacts and all those things should be tested here. Now, which of the following is a primary test goal is what we need to pick up. We got A, verifying that the SUT does not harm any user data. I think that's the very primary thing to be considered when you talk about the coexistence as this is an accurate test goal for testing the SUT for coexistence because interaction with other apps or conflict with other apps can really uh, certainly create some kind of uh, misbehavior which could lead to loss of data or any kind of you know information issue. So coexistence uh, of the app should be tested with other installed applications on the device so that's something which is very straightforward but let's cross check the other options before we be sure about the right option b identifying existing security issues on the device uh, this is not a valid test goal for coexistence or testing the context of coexistence of the SUT with the other applications because security is something which is related to a single app, not coexistence kind of context. Coming to see assessing usability problems in the SUT, I don't think, again, uh, we do have anything as a context to relate to coexistence uh, when it comes to usability. That's totally different uh, when it talks to user friendliness of an application. And D, testing if the SUT meets accessibility standards. That's again a different level of testing in order to test if the uh, app is accessible to differently able users and do the necessary uh, support to allow them to execute or work on the application. So putting it up all together, the right answer is a, verifying the SUT does not harm any user data will be the best goal or the only goal to test for coexistence of a system under test when working with other devices or sorry, the apps in a device. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Of course, there are many more questions which you can explore and let me know if you got any questions there. I'm always here to assist you, make you understand and let you know what you need. So feel free to let me know any of those questions which you don't get the answer for or probably need some justification. I would be more than happy to assist you. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. We'll be getting back to you with starting on chapter three. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.